Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about comparing two distributions. And the first thing I need to start off with is um, the graphs that we use when we do this. Okay, so whenever you're asked to compare distributions, there's only two graphs you should, should use, and that would be a box plot, a box plot, or a back-to-back -back stem and leaf. Back-to-back stem plot. That's just short for stem and leaf. Okay, so these are the two two uh, graphs that we generally use. Okay, so box plot's probably the one that's more often used. So let's look at this um, as before, is when we want to describe two distributions, we want to use our socks again. Okay, this was the acronym that we used. But there's a real important concept that you have to understand, and that's that we're actually comparing these two. We're comparing. So don't get done with the whole problem. Don't get done with the whole problem and just list a bunch of facts. It happens all the time. I'll give this data set the boys and I'll give the data set from the girls and people will just write a million facts just what's true this what's true that what's happening here what's happening there but that's not the important thing the important is that we're comparing which ones which one did better okay the interesting facts okay so if you remember this um, what socks means that would be shape now we're comparing the shape. This is probably the only one that you are allowed to just list the shape for both of them. Okay, are there any outliers in either one? Are there any outliers? You need to compare the centers. Compare. And you need to compare the spread, which is the variability. The variability. Variability is consistency. Which distribution is more consistent? Okay. So let's go ahead and start it. get started. The first thing we always, always do is make a graph. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the calculator here and show you how to make uh, two box plots on the same screen. And then we're going to do it the, by hand up here on the graph. So what you want to do is we want to go to our stat plot, which is here. These are our stat plots. Second y equals. And if you notice, they're all turned off. Now I want to have two of them on. And just as a side note, I preloaded the data in here already. If you notice, 84, 81, the data is already preloaded in list one and list two. So let me do this. This is my list one. This is my list two. Okay, let's go back to my stat plot. Okay, so if you notice, they're all turned off. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to enter me in there and it's blinking on the on. So I'm going to turn that on. And I want to go to this one right here the one that's blinking here these two little dots over here let me take this off there well these two dots here means that it's a modified which means it will check for outliers when to go down in the first plot I want list one so second L1 that's my list one now I'm done there now I want to go up to plot two one more Okay, now I'm on plot one, plot two, and go ahead and hit enter. Now I'm on plot two, it's blinking on on, so hit enter. Hit down, scan to the right. You can see the dots better here now. See those two dots right there? That means that it's a modified. That means if there's outliers, it'll show up. Hit enter there. I'm gonna put this in my list too. These are where my girl, the girl's scores are gonna go, okay? And now we wanna go ahead and zoom nine. Of course, it didn't work. Let's get out of here. Let's try to zoom nine from here. There we go. Now, remember, you always want to start off one of these problems and make sure that you understand what your context is. Okay, your context. And here are my two distributions. So this gives you a rough outlook. So this is what it's going to look like when I do it by hand. Okay. So follow those steps and have it on your calculator. And I'm going to go back to our W's. 
So who? Who are we interested in? We have two who's. We have the boys and the girls. How about the what? What are we interested in? We're interested in their exam scores from the first exam score. Okay? This is why, where, how, why, where, and when. I was missing one of these on earlier videos, but okay, these are the two important ones though. But you should know the rest of them. Okay, so the first thing we always do with data is graph it, like I just did. I have my data here. I'm going to do box plots. So I'm going to come over here and look at the minimum, which is 52. 52, and I'm going to, here, let me make these clear lines. 52. So that's supposed to be a little bit above 50. That's my whisker. And then I want to go to Q1, Q1, which is 72. Okay, now I want a box from 72 to 89. Box from 72 to 89. Oh, that's a little big. That's a little, I'm gonna make that a little smaller here. Okay, and now we want the last whisker to end at 99. That's whisker to end at 99. Just a little bit before 100. Okay, I'll just let that straight mark go. Okay, and let me just label these what they are. This is my min. This is Q1. My median falls at 81.5. So I'll throw that right there. That's my median, that's my Q3, this is my max. Okay, so that's for who? That's for my boys, so make sure you label this. That's for my boys' scores. These are AP, you have to label it. AP stat exam one. Now I have to do the girls. Okay, the minimum, minimum 72. Okay, let that be 72. Now I want to go to 81. 81 there. Now I want to take a box from 81 to 90. This is my IQR. Okay, let's do my median, 86. And the max is up to 94. Well, I'm still on box. That's the problem. I was wondering why the medium was so big there. Okay, good enough. And let's label it. These will be the girl scores. Girl scores. Okay, so there's my graph. It's labeled here overall, and these are my different groups. Usually when we do comparisons, it's for two groups. Okay, so let's go ahead and start describing this. And then it looks like both of these graphs are pretty much... Um, symmetric, roughly symmetric. So you could say both, everything's a comparison, both the girls and boys scores seem to be roughly symmetric. Okay, so I did my shape. That's pretty much it. Let's go to the next thing, which are outliers. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any outliers. Doesn't look like any of the scores are outliers. Maybe the 52, possibly. But since it didn't show up on this graph here, if it was an outlier, it would have showed up as a, a dot, not a whisker. Okay, that's how we know it's not an outlier. So There doesn't appear to be any outliers why did I put a Q there? 
outliers in either data set. Okay, you see how I'm writing about both of them. Okay, now let's look who did better. There's the median for the boys, here's the median for the girls, or we could say on average. Okay, so there's kind of two ways to write this, and I'll say one and I'll write the other one. You could say girls tended to do better than boys because their median was higher. I did a comparison. Or I could say on average, girls did better than boys because the mean of Here's the mean here. Mean of 85 is bigger than this one. But since we're doing box plots, I'm going to I'm going to use medians. Okay? So I'm going to say the girls tended that's a nice word to do better on I'm going to put some context in here on the first exam. than the boys. The girls median of, now I'm being very specific, median, median 86.5 is greater than the boys, the boys median of 81.5. Okay. Lastly, did the center. That's it. I compared them. Very specific. I didn't say the girls median was 86.5. The boys median was 81.5. Fact, fact, fact. No, I'm doing comparisons. Okay, now let's look at the consistency for for the consistency, I want to look at these right here, the size of this. Okay, because remember, 50% of the girls fell in this range. 50% of the girls fell between here and here. Let me change the color. 50% of the girls fell between here and here. 50% of the boys fell from here to here. So who is actually more consistent? Well, if more people fall in a smaller range, that means that the data was more compacted around the median. Okay, so the girls scores were more consistent. Okay, so let's go ahead and write about that. I'm going to do a comparison. The girls scores had less variability than the boys. Now we could just state the IQR, okay? We could state the IQR, or I could just say, uh, talk about it in, as a definition of um, the IQRs. That's very boys. Hence, I'll just shorten it. The girls IQR of, okay, where am I at here? IQR. The IQR for the girls would be Q3 minus Q1, which is 9, is less than the boys' IQR of 72, 82, looks like 17. Okay? And if you want, you could write about other interesting facts here. Let's look at, um, well, for now we're done. We're done. Okay. But if you want to write about something, th this is something else that you could talk about. And this just happened. If you look at this part right here for the boys, okay, there were 12 boys or 14, 14 test scores. Of those 14 test scores, 24%, 25% of those 14 fell below. 72. So this is 25%. Okay? Basically, 25% of the boys did less than the worst girl. Because this was the worst girl, right? 
this was the worst score for the girl. Okay, so this is 25% of the boys scored less than the worst girl. That's actually something that's pretty interesting. Okay, even though the boy did the best, 25% of the 14 did worse. Okay, so that's actually something else that you could put here. But that's the theme of the, the chapter is uh, comparing. Make sure that you compare. One other thing, if you have two, if you have two distributions, if you have two distributions, okay, and one is symmetric and the other one is skewed, okay, the distribution was skewed, you go ahead and use the median and the IQR, okay? If they're both symmetric, then you could use either one. If they're both skewed, then you'd use the median and the IQR. Never compare the median with the mean, okay? Never compare the median with the mean. So that's it. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.